Hello again, it's uh, Pastor John and Kim, and we're here for another edition of Wednesdays in the Word. We're continuing our study at, uh, by David Ramos, a look at the book of Job entitled Enduring with Job, a great topic for what, uh, where we find ourselves today. We are now on session three, so if you want to catch back up, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, the last two Wednesdays we've posted the first uh, two of the studies. We're still in chapter one, and uh, today we get to a little bit tougher part. Uh, we've seen, you know, um, who Job is, an upright man before God, and then we, uh, last week we talked about Satan and uh, God in their um, interaction mm -hmm. and how uh, all things fall under God's control. And today we're going to look at some of the fallout from that and how Job responds, and then uh, maybe look at how we respond and how God wants us to respond. So we are continuing today with Job chapter 1, verses 13 to 22. So Kim, if you would please read that. Surely. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels, and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they are dead and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Wow, that's, that's quite an account. Reminds me a little bit of what some of the our brothers and sisters to the south are enduring with the hurricane right now, and mm -hmm. or the people out in Iowa with the derecho. I think it's derecho uh, a, a couple weeks ago. And the fires uh, out. And the fires out in the west. west and, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, David Ramos's study is entitled "Our Big God," and uh, let me share that, and then we'll talk a little bit more. He says, in one typhoon, Job's life is changed forever. A series of four horrible events occur and the lone survivor from each incident reaches Job at almost the same time. First, a group of donkeys and oxen are stolen. A costly loss, but one that can be dealt with. Second, a large number of sheep and servants were lost to the fire of God, most likely lightning. Third, Job was robbed again, this time by a group of people who stole his camels and murdered his servants. But all of these losses pale in comparison to what came, comes last. The last servant cuts off the other speakers and lays out the most crushing news yet. Job's children had all been together eating and enjoying one another's company when a whirlwind brought down the house they were in and killed them all. In one day, Job had lost his wealth, his livelihood, and his family. Crushed, Job falls to the floor and cries out, I came into this world with nothing, and I will leave this world the same way. God gave to me, and he can take away. Praise God. Through it all, Job did not sin. At this point, he refused to be completely destroyed. He trusts God and continues to see God's sovereignty in every event. He could have blamed the people who hurt him or evil or anything, but he didn't. His first reaction to pain was to lean into God. I love this, but 
I'm also extremely challenged by it because this is not how I react to pain. When bad things happen, I do the opposite of Job. I blame people, circumstances, myself. I stress out when things don't go according to plan and pray nervous, angry prayers instead of praising God. Job could react the way he did because he saw God in a way we do not, as big. It was never a question to Job who allowed these things to happen. He says right away that God gives and, and God takes away. Do we see God as that big? Do we trust that God really does have his hand in everything? As we will see, everything Job believes about God will be challenged, even this. And I believe the only way we can grow is when we challenge our beliefs uh, about God as well. And David Ramos's takeaway for us is how big do I believe God is? I think that's a good question. Uh, probably something that we've been struggling with over the last few months, uh, especially being that we've been uh, isolated and alone, um, impacted by uh, friends or maybe family members who've had COVID or been impacted negatively economically or some other way that way. And I don't know if I could quite respond like Job does either because that that would be hard yeah I mean to to respond with worship like that's his first thing is to worship God and I would love to think that that would be my first response but um, that you know that's a mother's worst nightmare is losing her children so I wow I just can't even fathom that um, but I was thinking back to um, I know in your sermon I don't remember if it was this week or last week when you were talking about having the faith of a child. Um, and it was interesting to me how um, Job tore his robe and, and shaved his head and became naked, almost like, and, and talks about yeah. being, um, being born. <laughs> and I, you would have to then just completely fall on that childlike faith of Christ where... Uh, uh, you don't understand it. I don't can't make sense of it. It is all in God's hands. There's a child's book that I love to read. It's by Judith Borst, I think. Um, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, yeah. No Good, Very Bad Day. And um, this remind when when they're coming and saying, you know, oh by the, <laughs> let me tell you this, and then there's a the next bad thing and the next bad thing because in the book Alexander he, he goes to sleep with gum in his mouth and now there's gum in his hair and <laughs> throughout did, the day the it just goes adds, to sleep right. with Anthony not with me and it's just like you know every every five minutes of Anthony's life he has a bad day um, but th to lose everything is more than just a bad day that right. is a uh, will lock you to your core right I think. and challenge every belief you have I think. And I think it, it, you know, God uses that to reveal what's at the core as well. Uh, not only to reveal it, though, because he, he's not, he doesn't need to reveal it to himself. He knows what's there, um, maybe to reveal it to us, but also to um, help grow it in us as well. As we see going through this, um, you know, we opened it up with Job being a righteous man, and yet throughout this, we're going to see some things where um, there were some things that, that God wanted to draw out of Job and, and grow in him as well. Um, it's, it's just a tough lesson. Yeah. So we, um, we thank you for uh, joining us and allowing us to come into your life today and and I'm not sure what um, experiences you're going through that, that may be Job-like. Um, we all have, have those moments. Um, but I do know that our God is big, and he's far bigger than, than any of the issues that we have going on. We saw that as you know, what we started to reopen in per person 
uh, at, at church and are starting to have some more meetings and, and looking at how we continue to gather, even while we do it cautiously because I know the numbers are kind of going back up in places as well. But yet, we've been through a lot. and God has, has grown us all in our knowledge of this and in how to do some things safely. And, uh, you know, we step out each day in, in faith because um, we don't know what the day will bring, what messenger might come our way, but uh, we do know a God who is in control of it all. And we can respond with worship to having lives that worship, not just sanctuaries that right. worship. Yeah. Right, and that's probably one of the big things that we've gotten to take out of these last eight months is we can still serve and worship God and we don't have to be in a particular building. We can mm -hmm. gather here um, we can gather anywhere. And uh, so I hope that's a word of encouragement for each of you. We are, again, honored that you would uh, allow us to share with you. And we look forward to uh, continuing to gather with you here, gather with you more in person. Um, don't forget our Tuesdays together at the church parking lot. Uh, those are fun. We've now had two this last week. I think either people forgot that we were having it, or uh, it was a little chilly. But bring a blanket, bring, bring you know, some, some... A hot beverage. <laughs> a hot beverage, and uh, we'll just spend some time seeing each other face-to-face uh, -face a little bit. Mm -hmm. Social distanced, yeah. and, um, but being able to have a little bit of fellowship together. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very encouraging. And as we can see coming up in Job, if, if you know any of the story... Uh, that fellowship is important, being surrounded by, by people. So God's blessings, and uh, hope you continue to remain well. Uh, have a great night, and we look forward to seeing you again next week in Wednesdays in the Word. Have a good night. Right. Bye.